examples of street art, it's not always like, uh, like this from the natural graffiti. You can go uh, to stencils. There's another picture. So there's something I find really interesting that's Mona Lisa, and it's something that in a country kind of like appreciate this art. So being kind of it being changed is something I appreciate it. It's by Banksy, which is a pretty famous street artist all around the world. Yeah, it's good. Um, I love you, that's something obviously is a pretty strong statement, and the loading symbol kind of just shows that the media and social media nowadays that people don't really mean what they say. So it's pretty, it's pretty meaningful in, in terms of what's being said through art, and a lot of people don't really see. Excuse me? All right, great. Uh, something. So uh, you can go to the next slide. Some terms I'm be using throughout the uh, presentation. A tag is a basic two-dimensional thing, as you see in the video. A throw-up is basic, what usually people see as bubble letters. A piece is a three-dimensional, usually more than one color, and it's in the pretty side of graffiti or street art. So I people ask, like, what's the point of this? Like, why do people do this? Like, they don't really see the, the potential and the power of the art form. So a lot of people do it uh, to beautify community. And some of the pictures you've seen in the past few slides, it, it shows that it can really uh, impact the culture and like, the community, how it looks. Especially in a city like Chicago, where the streets aren't that nice and the buildings are kind of run down, a lot of times it really has the potential to change the image of the community. Uh, one of the, I guess, not so nice parts of graffiti is simply, sometimes you use it as a, I guess like an outlet to rebel against oppressive authority. So at times when people are used to conforming and kind of just going along with the flow, and never having a voice in what they what they do or what they think, they choose to use graffiti as a way to kind of go against that and be their own person and go against what you, what's usually seen in society. And whether you might think it's kind of weird or not, it could be seen as a sport. Uh, a lot of people, the term getting up, that's like uh, basically getting your artwork on the street. It's pretty hard to do that and uh, in the graffiti world, it's, it's Kind of respectable, and you get respect, and you get this self-esteem that you usually wouldn't get in your normal world. Especially like if you're not getting in school, a lot of kids choose to use graffiti as an outlet to kind of get that fame that they couldn't get any other way. All right, so I interview with James Weinkart. Weinkart is uh, one of the biggest spray paint uh, distributors in the country, and uh, it was pretty nice talking to him. I've had uh, previous like conversations with him about graffiti and what it has. How it impact an individual, and I asked him first of all, like how it impacted his life, and he said that graffiti to himself is kind of like the best thing he could do outside of work to kind of calm down. And he said it even affected his relationship with his wife as he was able to be a better person and come home and not only get money from what he loves, and he, he feels that when he goes to work, he's not really working; he's doing what he's loving and being able to support his family through it. Which is something I hope all of us can do in the future, instead of having that job that you really don't want to do, is to go to work and actually love what you're doing. The teachers here. And, um, and uh, I think that's something I really appreciate about James. I found him as a credible source as to how graffiti can really impact a person's life. And a quote down here, uh, I do think it could positively affect one's self-esteem um, based on their own accomplishments and the things they can accomplish with no drugs, alcohol, or anything else necessary. I think graffiti can be very rewarding to the individual who under undertakes it. So the downside, right? I'm not saying graffiti should be legalized. Obviously, writing on someone else's property is not okay. Uh, this does not look as nice as some of the other things I was showing, and that either. So I cannot understand why people will see, like, maybe some of these kids who are out there kind of wasting their lives and their time ruining someone else's property. I understand that this is kind of graffiti, and that's kind of back to the point of my presentation. Uh, a lot of times, people don't really get opportunities to kids who are looking for this outlet, right? And there isn't really much for you to do. If you want to paint, so you go take the space, or you just don't have any. So that's why a lot of times people leave and come to doing this, and don't really have the proper like resources that you would wish to have like in a school. So that kind of just goes as to why people do graffiti as well. So the benefits. Uh, this is a, a clip from a video. I'm not going to show you the video. It's pretty long. But it's a project called Here Comes a Neighborhood, and basically I run down the um, city in Detroit. The buildings were just very plain, and there wasn't much in the community that was kind of getting a culture or, like along with uh, citizens. So what they did was they, had, they brought a lot of uh, mainstream graffiti artists and a lot of other artists that weren't just graffiti or street art, but also just like very abstract forms of art. And they basically had a whole bunch of displays on, on the buildings that kind of brought the community together as one to create this. So that's a guy named Irsna. He's very famous. He's, he came from Bronx. And he literally started from the bottom, like uh, like a lot of us did, right? 
And he, he's now, he's like maybe a few hundred thousand dollars, I think, on solely off his creativity. So I think that's something that's pretty impactful. Proper Steel Company, uh, also known as Walls of Grace, that's probably the only place in Chicago where you can go and paint legally. But it's not in the best neighborhood, so you're kind of running the risk and you're getting hurt and going somewhere where you might end up in trouble. So it kind of goes back to the problem as to why there isn't any resources. Uh, this picture says spray paint, not bullets. I think to me, that's one of the most powerful images I've seen in regards to graffiti because a lot of kids in impoverished neighborhoods, they really, there isn't many opportunities for them to kind of like express themselves. At that time, it's either you pick up a gun or you pick up a spray can. And I know people who've taken both routes and some of them are dead. All the kids who I know who took up graffiti, they're still here. So I think that's something that I find very powerful in terms of graffiti as well. Hold on. And uh, for the solution, I would just say that bringing awareness to everybody and kind of showing the potential that graffiti has to save lives. I've been seeing like that's kind of cliche, like how, how can being on a wall save a person's life? But in certain situations where there isn't really much for a student to do or a kid to do, graffiti can, has the potential to, I mean, kind of create that 180 in a person's life and give them hope and give them a purpose in what they're doing. And also make a career out of it. I mean, a lot of people look for art on their buildings and stuff like that. And if it wasn't for uh, this art form, a lot of kids wouldn't be where they're at now. And especially a lot of entrepreneurs like James, who's doing really great in his life, he wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the video. So, perspective.